applause going for Rob Epstein, Jeffrey Friedman, and their wonderful cast. Producer Laura Rister and the others I don't need to introduce. <laughs> Can we have some time for uh, some question and answers? Yeah, right up front. Uh, Question is, um, what was it like to, to play this part, and what was it like to play the famous doctor's office? I, I, I wanted to be a part of this since the, from the day I heard about it. Um, and also, the, the, there was a perfect kind of package. There was a, 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 an amazing script, and these guys were attached to it, and I was just like, I, I feel like this is, this, is, this is what I need to be doing. I was looking for a challenge. I wanted to tell her story. Um, I wanted to get involved in someone's life in that way and, um, and portray somebody that really existed. And I, I think it's her, her story is really fascinating. I think it's um, I don't know. It's 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 controversial. I I, I love this kind of stuff. And um, shooting that scene was actually really fun. It was probably the most fun I had on set because the acting in Deep Throat is so. Um, it's so bad. <laughs> and, <laughs> no, it, 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 in, in, in such a wonderfully innocent, like, cute way. And, and reenacting those scenes is just like insane because I watched it over and over again. We all watch it over and over again. And sometimes I literally I see you guys and I just want to like speak like that. <laughs> just, just, I don't know, it's just really... Um, we had a lot of fun on this movie, despite all the dark places we had to go at times with, with this man. Um, but we, we laughed more than I've ever laughed in a movie before, so that's, it goes to show it's, you've got to have good people around you tell a good story and believe in it, and, you know. Uh, yep, over here. Uh, to uh, Rob and Jeffrey, why did you want to tell this story? The question is to the filmmakers, why did they want to tell this story? It's a great story. Um, Linda... Uh, embodies a moment in our culture that uh, I think is really fascinating. The moment we think of as the sexual revolution and um, the segue into feminism. Um, her story, you know, her story embodies all of that. And I think, you know, in many ways, it, it, uh, Deep Throat and, and, and the whole Linda phenomenon was the beginning, you know, it was the beginning of the porn explosion. It was before, you know, before the internet and before, um, before you could look at porn on your phone. So, <laughs> uh, in, in many ways it defined who, who we are as a, as a, as a culture sexually. And the whole idea of celebrity culture, I think, was interesting to us. Um, we thought of Linda as the first reality star. She became famous for, you know, for her special talent. And then she was just famous for being famous. And then the fame sort of took over and, and, um, and she had to really struggle to get her, her sense of identity back. Uh, well, first of all, we were partying till 3 o'clock last night. After our premiere and the film sold, we were very happy. <laughs> Some of us are a little hungover, but you can enjoy it vicariously. Uh, hopefully I can put a sentence together. Um, we were so, when, when we were first approached by, by Laura and the other producers to consider this project, we were so taken with the, you know, the story of this 22-year-old woman who became world famous as an international porn star and then had to spend the rest of her life redefining herself, struggling to redefine herself and to find her own voice. 
and we really wanted to find a story structure that could somehow convey her psychological state at, at those different junctures of her life. So that's what really excited us both in terms of what the film might have to say and how we might try and tell it. Um, yeah, right there. Because they need something to protest against. Yeah. <laughs> question, question is about the, you know some of the the controversy maybe around some of the sexual content in films in the festival here. Yeah, but just the perceived sexual content. Yeah, it's, it's all about the perception. I guess they, as I was saying, they need something to protest against. Um, it sounds like it's a small group. It sounds like they don't know anything about the film, or they didn't. You know, they certainly haven't seen it. There's no one had seen it prior to the premiere last night. So, um, really, um, it's based on description alone. What country are you from? I'm from the country of Georgia. Uh, oh, no. Next question. Yeah, all the way in the back up there. Yep. Pete? Yeah, the question is Catherine McKinnon, who is an attorney and has done a lot of work uh, on the pornography issue. She represented Linda Lovelace uh, later in her life, Linda Borman, uh, Linda Margiano, actually, um, and was a consultant on the film. We contacted Gloria Steinem in our research phase. You know, we were in touch with people who knew Linda. And Gloria was one of the people that we uh, just had an informal uh, telephone interview with, and then she uh, introduced us to Catherine McKinnon, uh, who then introduced us to Linda's children, who were all here last night and uh, loved the movie. 